All righty, so welcome everyone to TAM Lab number seven. Uh, today I'm going to be deploying a Log Intelligence Remote Collector or RDC in my lab and then uh, configuring my on prem instance of Log Insight to essentially forward logs to the collector, which will then forward the logs up to uh, Log Intelligence. So let me close out of this. And a real quick question for those of you on the call. How many of you have, have played around with log intelligence or have customers that use it or have any exposure to it at this point? No, I'm just here to learn more about it in case, uh, in case I see an application for it. Okay. So it, it is relatively new for us. I think it launched in April, so it's still fairly young. Um, however, it is one of our cloud services, so it, the, the development is pretty rapid, right? It's not like a traditional on-prem product where we do essentially like two updates a year. It's, it's continuously improving. So um, I'll quick, let me talk a little bit about it uh, before I kind of dive into it. So why would we have logs in the cloud, right? I, there's, there's a couple of reasons where it makes a lot of good sense. So for those of you that have deployed Log Insight with some of your customers, um, it's a great product. I love it, but there are some there are some challenges with it, and not necessarily Log Insight as a product, but just any log management product that's on prem, right? So they typically have a pretty large storage footprint because you are essentially collecting logs, and the the more storage you have, uh, the the better retention you're going to have. So there is a large storage footprint. Uh, associated with with any log solution, and when I've helped my customers deploy Log Insight, they were, I guess, surprised when they went to deploy it and they saw how large of a, a footprint it, it required. And you also want to deploy it as a thick BMDK or thick BMDKs because of performance purposes, right? So you want to have typically pretty fast storage and a lot of it for any on-prem log solution. So having having something up in the cloud makes a lot of sense because it's gonna, when, when you look at the overall cost of Log Insight, uh, the licensing is, is relatively reasonable, but there's all those other things that you need to take into account, like the storage or the CPU and memory resources, right? Because it does require a good a good amount of those as well for, uh, for all the querying and, and things like that. Um, Another another good reason why it makes sense to have this in the cloud is that if you have on-prem log insight instances, you may have more than one, right? You could have multiple data centers. You could have one master log insight environment where you're aggregating all your logs. So that starts to get pretty complex and you're going to have multiple nodes in each of those environments. So now you got to worry about things like lifecycle management and, you know, going through the motions to, to update things, even though it is relatively painless. You know, it is is something to consider. Um, and then also having all of your logs on prem is it can be a risk, right? Because if if your entire data center goes down, then having those logs not being available isn't going to help you as you troubleshoot trying to get things back online, right? And you may even lose some of the the log data while things are not available or offline, right? So um, getting all that stuff off prem uh, makes a lot of sense. So it's really about choice. It's not really saying, we don't want to position this with our customers as, you know, it's log insight or it's log intelligence, one or the other. It's uh, it's more about maybe look at tiering your, your logging solution and using both. Or if you've already got things in the public cloud, it makes probably more sense to send things to log intelligence. Um, <clears throat> and maybe you want to use kind of a, a mixture of both, right? So. Anyway, uh, any questions around any of that? Do you guys have any thoughts? Okay. Um, I will mention this. Uh, if Sorry, is someone trying to talk? Yeah, not... I was on mute when I was talking, and I just figured it out. But... Oh. No, it totally makes an explanation on why they wouldn't just keep it on-prem. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'll mention is if you have VMC on AWS or if one of your customers does, they get log intelligence for any of the audit and security logs associated with that solution. So they will get it right out of the box, essentially. And 
One other thing to mention is our internal support team for VMC on AWS, they actually leverage log intelligence for all of their troubleshooting purposes. So we're essentially eating our own dog food, right? So uh, it is powerful. And, and I'll kind of walk through what the solution looks like once I deploy a remote collector here. So uh, before I deploy anything, though, I'm going to show you, because I did have a collector in my lab. I was playing around with it. And I deleted it this morning, and I just want to show you what the process looks like to delete a remote collector from the portal. So if we log in here to our cloud services platform and go to the console, log in. I, I actually was able to get access. Um, some of the folks in the technical marketing CMBU team were able to kind of give me access so I could play around. I'm planning on blogging about it. So. So once you log in, you'll see any services that you have. I just have the one here, so I'm gonna launch that. And right off the bat, you'll notice it, it looks, it has a similar look and feel to Log Insight. And uh, they're working on adding more features and functionality here. Uh, I haven't seen the roadmap for a while, but uh, it's pretty robust and it, it's come a long way already since April. So I'm pretty excited about it. And they've added additional um, content packs as well. But if we go into, on the left side here under manage, uh, you'll see the section for data collectors. This was the one I had deployed in my lab, right? So I deleted it this morning and I initially came in here to delete it because I wanted to show you guys you know, what that process looks like. But when I went to delete it, it wouldn't let me because it was still showing as active. And it took about an hour or so of essentially no communication between the remote collector and log intelligence before it, it marked it as inactive. So that is one requirement before you can delete the remote collector is that it needs to be inactive, which like I said, it was about an hour or so. So, so anyway, I'm going to delete this. Uh, essentially, they're giving you a warning here. You cannot reverse this action. It's not gonna delete the logs that it's ingested from that remote collector, but it won't, like if you still had the remote collector on-prem and you turn it back on, it wouldn't work because that that connection between the two, that trust has been broken and you've deleted it, right? So, so I'm gonna remove it and hopefully this will go away here in a couple minutes. We'll give that some time. Um, but if we were to de uh, deploy a new one, you just come in here, you go to new, it gives you uh, a link for an OVA. So this would be in like a vSphere environment. You can also deploy an AMI into native AWS if you want to collect logs from your native AWS environment, which is pretty cool, right? So you can get stuff from all that. Um, you can also collect logs from like Azure. However, we don't have a remote collector for that environment yet. So the way you would do that is you would come into APIs and you would send data through the API. Uh, but I believe we are working on creating a collector for Azure as well. Okay, cool, so this one is gone now. Anyway, so you come in, you're gonna click new, you're gonna download the OVA, which I've already got downloaded here. Uh, we'll import that to vCenter, and then when we're deploying that OVA, it's gonna ask for uh, this key right here, All right? And this is gonna change every time you come in and, and create a new one. So we'll just input that, and then Give it a couple minutes and it should show up here. So I'm actually going to go back to vCenter and I'm going to deploy my OVA. And feel free to, you know, ask questions as we go through this. This is not just meant to be me talking for an hour. So, so we're going to click next, give it a name. Uh, Lint, it's commonly referred to Lint, right? So log intelligence. So you may hear that internally. I'll put that in my vRealize folder. My prod cluster. I did, ahead of time, I set up uh, an IP address for this and I added it to DNS with a reverse lookup as well. So that is like really the only requirement is having your, your FQDN and your IPs predetermined, right? Choose your data store, choose your network. 
to support IPv6. All right, so here's your one-time key that we're going to get from the log intelligence portal. And we'll just paste that there. You're going to define your root username, or I'm sorry, root password. Um, this is going to be the display name as it shows up within log intelligence. So I'm just going to name it lint. Uh, telecoms.local. You can put anything you want there. If you've got a large environment, you may want to specify which data center this is or whether it's prod or QA or that sort of thing. Um, this next section is all about a proxy. So if you need a, a proxy to get out to the internet, the only requirement it has from a network perspective is that it can get out to the internet via 443. So if you, if you require a proxy, that's where you can enter these these settings here. I don't have that in my lab, so I'm just going to skip it. And then we put in our usual networking components here. My DNS in. And then the IP address. That's it, click next, and we're ready to go. Click finish. Here it is, so it's important. So what I'm actually gonna do once this gets deployed is go into my on-prem um, log insight environment, and I'm going to set up a forwarder there to just forward all the, all the logs to uh, the, the collector here. You don't have to do that. You can specify just traditional syslog Right, I think it's port 514, or TCP, or UDP, and you can send it directly to the collector. Uh, it also supports the API as well, the CAF API, which I forget which port that is. I think it's like 9000 or something. So if we go here, the documentation for log intelligence is, is pretty good, actually. So let's launch that. And we'll look at the, uh, the network ports. Yeah, port 9000, CF API. So really it's just those four ports, well five if you count TCP and UDP, or I'm sorry, three ports, four if you count TCP and UDP. All right, so that's been deployed. Um, I'm going to power this up, and you will notice it is running on Photon, and it's pretty straightforward um, <clears throat> from a virtual appliance perspective. There's really no web GUI to it, uh, and the only real kind of status that you can get from it is you SSH into it, and you'll see that it's running a, a Docker container. So it's already up and running. Uh, and then if you SSH to it, it'll show you just a couple commands you can run to get the status of like uh, the containers that are running and what the status of all those are. In fact, we can do that right now, just so you can see it. Oh, uh, of course. So I had my other one and now my my key doesn't match, so hold on. Where is it? Forget what the command is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. All right. So if we SSH, it 
You will see. I think it's still booting up here. I think it's still registering with, uh, with log intelligence. So if we go back to the portal here, click next. Oh, this would also show you kind of your options as far as sending logs to the collector itself, right? It says here that the log insight agent itself, you can leverage that uh, to send logs directly to the, the collector, but I had a hard time getting that to work, so I need to dig into that further. All right, so you can see now we've got our new one. It's already active, so it's already set up that uh, communication channel. And now we get some uh, options here as far as what we can look at within the collector itself. All right, so there's, you can run uh, data collector status. And it's gonna show you uh, some other things you can do, like we can do the status. And it should come back saying everything's connected. Yeah, it's running. So it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty um, pretty easy, not much to do really there. You just deploy the, the collector and you're good to go, all right? So now that we've got the collector deployed, I'm going to log into my existing log insight environment. Is it up? Running. There we go. My login site is running slow. And then looking at the remote collector, just to show you what it deploys with as far as resources, it's four CPUs, 12 gigs of RAM, and two hard drives, 60 and 20 gigs. So it's a much smaller footprint than a typical login site node. There may be uh, some reservations here as well. Let me look. No CPU reservation. No, no reservations. Okay. All right, so we're in login side. I'm going to go into the administration side. And I'll go to event forwarding. I'm going to set up a new destination. Call this whatever you want. Put in your FQDN. Um, I'm going to use the ingestion API since it supports it. If I wanted to, I could tag some things or I could add filters as well. So if I didn't want to send everything, my test works. So I'm going to click save. Let's see, what else can we look at? Um, so once you are, you are getting data and log intelligence, if you go to the explore log section, this is going to look real similar to, to log inside at this point, right? So you can just do your typical searches. So there's, oops, there's zero, I'll do three. So here you can see any logs from this particular host, and you can always do your you know, filtering based off of uh, any of the, the fields that it dynamically picks up from the logs, right? Um, they are working on adding additional content packs. I think right now it's just these four, but I, I was looking at a blog earlier where it showed additional things like Windows and Linux and vCloud Director, but I don't see that in my environment. So 
that might just be on like a an older rev or something like that, given that this is part of the CMBU. Um, and then you create you know dashboards and alerts and things like that. So I'm not going to get into how to use it per se, uh, but we can cover that in another session if you want. Uh, but essentially, that's it. I mean, that's that's everything as far as deploying a collector in your environment and, and pointing it at log intelligence, and then from there you're off and running. So, if you guys have any questions, any feedback, any thoughts around the solution in general? No, it looks simpler than setting up a regular login site, though. Yeah, um, I think they're also adding. Uh, in a future release here, the ability to have like multiple, more like an RBAC model where you can, you know, limit what certain users of your organization see. And I think that's done by uh, the org that we inherently have built into our, our cloud services portal. Um, all the logs coming from the remote data collector are compressed and they're encrypted. So that's by default, you can't turn that off. It's all encrypted. So I'm sure customers will have questions around that. And did, um, I think maybe I missed it at the start. Where does it send them to, to, to VMware? Um, so you can't cloud. even, conf yeah, it's all, it's all going up to our cloud services platform. Um, you can't even change where it's sending the logs, right? When we deployed it, all it asked for was that one-time key yeah. that you get when you go into here and you say new. So it's not configurable, right? It, you, you're not going to tell it, send it here or send it here. It's, okay, it's just that's what I wanted to plug. check. Already had stuff up in the cloud and they wanted to send their stuff. They can't pick their own um, rep repository, basically. It has to go to ours. Correct. And it's going to automatically detect like which org uh, and which tenant in our cloud based off of this one-time key, right? So depending on which portal or which account you're logged in as, that's what it's going to send the logs to. Right? It gets associated with that org. So I mean, I could have, if I went here, I could have multiple orgs. In fact, I did set one up for my lab, but I just didn't have any services associated with it. So which one, whichever one you're in when you create this new data collector is where it's going to send or where it's going to show all those, all those logs. That's it. No, it looks easy. It looks nice. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of blogs out there around actually using the log intelligence. Uh, I didn't want to get into it too much today, but it is pretty straightforward. You know, there's a, you get a bunch of uh, dashboard examples right out of the box with some of the content packs that we have. Of course, you can set up your own. You can set up alerts. Um, you can send them via email. We uh, have a default SMTP server just through our cloud services portal, or you can use your own if you want. Um, you can create custom metrics. You can send alerts to custom webhooks if you want. Uh, like Slack or or anything else that you wanted to ingest, you know, these alerts. You could even do like VROPs, I suppose, if you wanted to, but then that would have to probably be uh, public facing, right? But if you wanted to just configure this to connect in via like a like a post API sort of thing, right? Well, Alrighty, Steve, anything it? else? I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. All right, if there's nothing else, I'll let you go about a half hour early. Good deal, thank you. Hey, hey thanks, I All appreciate right. that, Steve. Talk to you later. You bet. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. All right. Um.